This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. I am presenting this program today with a deep sense of sadness. Because what we are experiencing in our country, the United States of America, is appalling in the eyes of God. And are we really facing persecution, state-sponsored persecution of churches, of Christians, in the United States of America? Well, I will show you today that that is exactly what we are experiencing and things won't get any better. And let me also just say that no matter who the next president of the United States of America is going to be, based on their statements, it will continue and it will get worse. I'm talking about the left liberal, transgender, homosexual, same-sex marriage policy agenda, which leads to persecution of churches. First, let us talk a little bit about the positions as they have been declared. Let's begin with Hillary Clinton. The social press wrote as early as October 5, 2015. Hillary Clinton on Saturday delivered the strongest speech in support of gay rights, promising that ending discrimination against gay, lesbian, and transgender people would be a central pillar of her administration. The statement marked a remarkable evolution for Clinton, who opposed same-sex marriage for more than two decades in public life as first lady, senator, and presidential candidate. She committed to pushing equal rights in the military, including for transgender people. Now, why that quote-unquote evolution? The answer is clear. It is merely political, to get votes, to get votes from Democrats, to perhaps get votes from independents. But Mr. Trump, it's not that much different. The New York Times wrote on April 22, 2016, that Donald Trump said that transgender people should be allowed to use whatever bathroom they feel most comfortable with, including at Trump Tower in New York. Now, he got some backlash when he said that, and a month later, on May 16, the Washington Post wrote that Donald Trump vowed that if elected president, he would rescind the Obama administration's new directives aimed at protecting transgender people against discrimination in schools and health care coverage. But he repeatedly said that transgender people should be protected under the law, and said he believed most states would make the right decisions. Now, we'll see how right the decisions of states already have been. But you see, he got backlash on that. And then, on August 15, Breitbart published an article by a gay journalist. That is August 15 of this year. And this is what that article said. Donald Trump has just outflanked Hillary Clinton on the left and announced what can only be described as an ultra-progressive immigration policy. Actually, it's about the most pro-gay policy I have ever heard from a presidential hopeful. It had to do with the immigration concept, which he announced. In other words, people who want to come into the United States will have to be asked certain questions including what their position is on equal rights for gender equality and gays. And the concept is, if you say anything which is critical of the gay lifestyle, you won't be allowed to enter the United States. Now, Newsmax reported on August 26, 2016, that a appointee, a judge, an appointee of Republican former President George W. Bush made this decision. A U.S. judge on Friday blocked the University of North Carolina 
from enforcing a state law requiring transgender people to use single-sex restrooms and locker rooms that correspond to the gender on their birth certificate. So in other words, they can decide, okay, well, I'm now suddenly a man or I'm suddenly now a woman, so I want to go to a bathroom for men or for women, whatever the case may be. Now, you must think in the way this whole issue, this whole agenda is being covered in the press, that we are talking about, what, 20 or 30 percent of Americans being transgender? Or maybe it's a little bit too high. Let's say 10 percent. Maybe that's too high. Let's say 5 percent. You know that less than 1 percent of adults identify themselves as transgender. 0.6 percent, according to Newsmax. But the agenda is there. And the agenda is already leading to persecution and to prosecution of Christian churches in the United States of America. I'll give you a few examples now. World Net Daily wrote on September 10, 2016 about Massachusetts. The Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination this month released a gender identity guidance that imposes its demands on society. Under the law, places of public accommodation may not discriminate against or restrict a person from services because of that person's gender identity. For example, a hotel or motel may not refuse to book a room for a person because of the person's gender identity. Even a church, even a church could be seen as a public or a place of public recommendation and accommodation if it holds a secular event, such as a spaghetti supper that is open to the general public. Now, the law actually talks about churches being places of public accommodation. And so the article goes on to say that the demands include having church officials, even members, use whatever pronouns a person would demand, irrespective of their actual gender. And the interesting thing is, the church would be held responsible if one of their members at such a public gathering would say anything which could be looked upon as discriminatory of transgenders or homosexuals, for that matter. What about Iowa? In Iowa, a church sued the state and federal court demanding that officials withdraw their threats of prosecution because of the content of the church's sermons specifically what is said about homosexuality, same-sex marriage, transgenderism, and other related topics. That case erupted when the state's Civil Rights Commission first claimed the authority to control the content of sermons and then to define what is religious. At issue is the state's non-discrimination requirements that specify any public accommodation can be ordered not to say anything that might make a homosexual or a transgender feel unwelcome, such as even reading from the Bible a condemnation of such behavior. Do you see, my friends, where that's all going? Because of a radical left liberal agenda? California, of course, has to be included in this summary because you are not surprised anymore if you hear about religious persecution in the United States. It has to include California. So Breitbart wrote on August 23, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco upheld California's widely controversial Senate Bill 1172 that bars licensed counselors, including pastors, from assisting youth who want to change or reduce their same-sex attractions. The law also prohibits any counseling that would steer youth away from gender confusion. According to the law, and I quote, California has a compelling interest in protecting the physical and psychological well-being of minors, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender youth, and in protecting its minors against exposure 
to serious harms caused by sexual orientation change efforts. Under no circumstances shall a mental health provider engage in sexual orientation change efforts with a patient under 18 years of age. Close quote. And then the article goes on to say the Ninth Circuit today waived any concerns about California interfering with pastors' religious practice, while also declining to address legal decisions that previously rejected state interference with church counseling. So the churches are not allowed to talk to the young people who might be quote-unquote confused about their gender. What does God have to say about this? Are we surprised that the Bible talks about perilous end times? Are we surprised that the Bible talks about the leaders of our nations being like leaders of Sodom and Gomorrah? Before I close, I'd like to read to you a statement from the Bible. But before I'm going to do that, let us ask the question, how can we know that the Bible is God's word? That the Bible speaks with authority? That we must rely on and follow the dictates of the Bible, no matter what the state, the government, a country might try to accomplish. Well, we have a free booklet prepared. It's called The Authority of the Bible. And I would strongly encourage you to ask for a free copy because this will tell you why you can absolutely be assured that what the Bible tells you is true and is correct and must be followed. I'd like to read in conclusion a scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 taken from the Living Bible saying this, Don't fool yourselves. Those who live immoral lives, who are adulterers and homosexuals, will have no share in his kingdom. There was a time when some of you were just like that. But now your sins are washed away, and you are set apart for God. Thank you very much for viewing this program. Until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.